This is Hemi. And Jessica. And you're listening to the Friendly Atheist Podcast. Please go to patreon.com slash friendly atheist podcast to support this show. Hello, Jess. Hey, Hemi. You, you don't look the happiest. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you to everybody who reached out last week. Um, this week, you'll be happy to know I'm substantially worse. <laughs> um, a, oh God, my friend's little sister passed away. Um, and her funeral was yesterday, and it's a friend from high school, so I've known this... It's miserable and fucking terrible. So anyway, and oh, don't worry. Immediately before I left for the funeral of a 20, of a 32-year-old young woman, my husband got an email that he did not get a job that we both thought he was a shoe in for. So things are poorly in the Greif household right now. So I'm sorry. If I overreact to something or if I accidentally get drunkity drunk, then it's a regular episode. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fucking miserable, gang. It's bad all over. Here's your toy, Dottie. <laughs> Leave us alone now. I'm here to brighten up your day. Yeah, this that's the other thing, you guys. I, I'm This podcast, I'm so proud of it. It's one of my <laughs> favorite things. I love to brag about it. It is the worst to record. <laughs> it is so miserable sometimes. So, yeah, no, it's fine. Let's do it. Let's hit it. Sure, why not? And Hemet told me all of the stars of the show today are men, so... So you know it's going to end well. <sighs> Boy, let's right. hear them. Did you follow no. anything about the Speaker of the House? Do you know who the new one is? Um, I do know so many posts. I, I genuinely have not been following any news, period. I didn't find out about the shooting until <sighs> mm, later than I should have, just because mental health. Um, so, no, I do know the guy is like... A loon, right? He is a loon. And the question is how is he specifically that could, that anti gay or anti choice? Which one is he? Correct. Oh. Um, like he is a loon, but that doesn't narrow it down in the GOP. Well, obviously. So the question is how bad is this guy? Why is he bad? And the thing is And his, how did he get the votes? And needed? how did he get the votes? I mean, this isn't the political podcast, but needless to say, the reason this guy who if the argument was we need someone who's not gonna turn off every independent voter, mm. um, this is not the guy you would have chosen. His name is Mike Johnson. He's from Louisiana. Um, he, he's not Ooh, the guy you would have chosen. a Republican from Louisiana. That's this is going to go well. Um, he is as hardcore of a Trumpy sort of Republican as you could find. Mm -hmm. Social conservative, religious conservative. Um, every Republican position you can imagine is this guy. Sure. Um, that's why the hard right likes the guy. But the question is, well... Aren't there like 10, 20 people who probably wouldn't want to go along with that because they live in Biden districts? And maybe they were like, I don't want Jim Jordan to be the Speaker of the House because that's going to hurt me in my reelection right. campaign. So why did they vote for this guy? And basically, as far as I can tell, the only reason they all voted for him, and it was unanimous among Republicans. They got bored. They got bored. They were like, we just need an answer. And two... I mean, he seems like he's one of these guys who gets along with everyone and doesn't go out of his way to make enemies among Republicans. So he's personable. Personable to Republicans. Well. And then they're like... That was implied. If I tell you the name like Marjorie Taylor Greene, mm. you already have a connotation of what that person talks mm -hmm. like, sounds like, so what So they she, thought if they get somebody with the most generic name they can imagine, who he's unbookable. Who you probably haven't seen unless you watch Fox regularly, who you probably don't see on TV. They don't make fun of him because he's a non-factor by and large in yeah, Congress. Yeah, I, I don't think I was familiar with him. That's why. Um, I'm going to quote really quick from a New Yorker article about this guy getting chosen and the reason... The uh, the reporter was asking around, like, why would the so-called moderates go for this guy more than anybody else? And the reason, I asked a former senior GOP aide uh -huh. how moderate members, he's putting that loosely, <laughs> could justify voting against Jim Jordan, but for Mike Johnson. Their politics are nearly indistinguishable, dot, dot, dot. Fair. The GOP aide replied, have you ever heard of Mike Johnson? I mean, that's the answer. Yeah. It's no one knows the guy yeah. yet. And so they just don't hate him yet. They're going to. So the thing I wanted to talk about on this show is, one, how did this guy with such extremist right wing views escape scrutiny as long as he did? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? And like what should be done differently? Because he's it's not that this guy was off the radar for people who follow church state separation. It sounds like he knows how to keep his mouth shut maybe yeah. a little bit better than other people the and like picks his battles if we haven't heard of him. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, have you heard of Leonard Leo? 
Mm-mm. Leonard Leo is the guy who basically handpicks the Supreme Court justices that Republicans have chosen. Oh, got you. And he runs the Federalist Society. He oh. basically also controls who they pick for the federal district sure. judges and the appellate court judges. And for a long time, one of the reasons he was able to get away with all this is because he had a ton of money to pull it off. Mm. And he didn't care about the spotlight. He actually liked being under the radar and just controlling all the puppet strings, right. but off the radar. If you follow politics and judicial stuff now, you definitely know who this guy is because he's the architect of the right-wing federal shift. Oh, okay, right? yeah. Mike Johnson is kind of the same thing. He does all the right-wing stuff, but he's always stayed under the radar while other people took credit got the limelight and all that, and he never really cared. He always worked behind the scenes. And now, at the point where, oh, shit, you actually have a lot of power. You're second in line in the presidency. Right. God damn it. Uh Uh-huh. Now, it's almost too late to stop him. So, uh, let me go over what you need to know about this guy. Because it's not like there is a shortage of right-wing extremists in the Republican Party. But this guy is kind of unique in the sense. By the way, Susan Collins, the senator from Maine, Mm -hmm. even said, I don't know how jokingly she said this, I don't think she was, that she would have to Google him. Like, didn't even know the guy and he works next door. Hey, Susan, maybe don't admit that, hon. Uh Maybe maybe keep that particular card close to your vest. So let's run through his Christian Mm -hmm. nationalist resume Mm -hmm. because if you were looking to put a Christian nationalist in charge of the Republican Party, Mm -hmm. this is a guy that would have been at the top of your list. Okay, Okay. let's go through this list. Can't wait. He lied about Thomas Jefferson's support for separation of church and state. Thomas Jefferson famously had his Jefferson Bible without the miracles, Mm -hmm. wrote a letter basically talking about why church state separation was important. Mm -hmm. What did Johnson say about it years ago? The founders wanted to protect the church from an encroaching state. Not the other way around. So it's totally fine for the church to take over the state, just not the other way around. We're going to get through a bunch of these. Yeah, Johnson yeah, okay. falsely claimed that the U.S. is the only nation founded on a, quote, religious statement of faith. Wow, that is so easily disproven. Very much so. Like, on both sides of that coin, that the United States was, in fact, not founded on that, and that other countries are very much... Rel- has, has he heard of the Vatican? He doesn't do other countries. Very <sighs> much America first. Um, he support Back in the day, when Ken Ham was building Ark Encounter, mm-hmm. he needed a lot of money to pull it off. Mm-hmm. And he wanted money from the local government. Like, and he wanted money from the Kentucky Tourism Bureau. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, we're going to bring in tourist dollars to our state... So give us a tax break for mm-hmm. the tourism the tourism stuff we're bringing into you. Uh, Johnson actually support, not only supported that mission to use taxpayer payer funds to build Ark Encounter, he later defended him uh, when he sued the state of Kentucky in order to have the ability to discriminate in hiring. I forgot about that piece of it. Yeah. So it's not just that he's a young earth creationist, yeah. Mike Johnson. He is. Mm-hmm. But also, he's actively supported not just Ken Ham, Creation Museum, Ark Encounter, right. Answers in Genesis, but their ability to get taxpayer funding to support their ministry. Yeah, he's bringing a sledgehammer to that separation of church uh-huh. and state. Um, he also has said, we've talked about David Barton, the Christian pseudo-historian. Oh, that guy. A notorious liar, who basically his whole shtick is, I'm going to lie about the founding fathers mm-hmm. and say they supported everything I happen to mm-hmm, believe. Mm-hmm, Johnson mm-hmm. says David Barton has had a, quote, profound influence on me and my oh. work and my life and everything I do. Oh, so I can just make things up and they become true Which with sheer force of will. Which is how the Republican Party works. Yep. Uh, Johnson has filed legislation uh, forcing witnesses who appear in front of House committees to use the religious phrase, so help me God, in their oaths. When Democrats took over the House, they said, yeah, you don't have to say that if you don't feel like it. Just say the rest of the oath. And he's like, oh, no, mm-hmm. that is in the oath. Those are the real problems you in need this to stupid say country. Yeah. Uh, he also promoted a conservative <sighs> Christian-sponsored Bible course in public schools. And maybe you think there is a way to teach the Bible as literature mm-hmm. in public schools if it's done right. No, no, no. The curriculum he sponsored was widely criticized for its evangelical zeal <laughs> and treating the Bible, quote, as an accurate record of history. Oh, boy. He promoted that. And then in response to critics who said, this course doesn't, like, talk about Christianity in a subjective sort of way, in in an objective sort of way, 
He said, and they said it promoted a one-sided conservative evangelical version of Christianity. Mm. Johnson said, well, the Supreme Court did not say you have to discuss everybody's view on the Bible. It's just his version that matters. What does that, what does he refer? Basically saying it's totally fine if the Bible course we're teaching in public schools happens to promote a specific view of the Bible that happens to be my own. Like, mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm. disturbing. Okay, cool. So um, this guy is just a... Oh, I'm just getting started. ...slimy piece of shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could have told you that a while ago, but... That no, didn't... I know, but he's just really doing every... Like, he's just hitting oh. all the buttons of, like, intellectual dishonesty... Focusing on shit that does not matter. Yes. Pretending that whatever he feels like in his heart is also truth. Like, it's all... Mm-hmm. It's cool. all that. Cool. Um, there was a time, remember when Colin Kaepernick was kneeling on the field at football games when he was allowed to play football? Uh, was he really chill about that? Very. Well, he supported... Well, there his was a Louisiana... freedom of speech? Yeah. There was a Louisiana school district that passed a policy that required student athletes to stand during the national anthem after all that happened. So fragile. And what did Mike Johnson do? Not only did he support it. it on the flag. He, he, that's exactly how Jesus wanted it. Mm-hmm. Mike Johnson supported that school district and said the district, quote, was not going to bend over and bow to the whims of these atheist, radical, secularist groups. And this guy is third in command of our country? Uh-huh. He also mm-hmm. believes public high school coaches should be able to lead prayers with students. That's fine. Okay, here's a story. Mm-hmm. Years and years ago, mm-hmm. back in the day, there was a district in Texas where the high school cheerleaders would show up at football games. That's normal. And they would hold up these banners that the football players run through and on oh, their way sh- to the field. And their banners had Bible verses on yes. them. And the question is, are these just students, you know, uh, talking about their religious faith, mm-hmm. which might be legal, or is it a school-sponsored activity at this point? Because these are cheerleaders wearing their school uniforms uh, during a school-sanctioned football game, mm-hmm. doing this stuff. And Johnson supported those cheerleaders, of course he did, and he argued that superintendents should feel empowered to resist the bullying tactics of atheist groups. That's his defense there. If my mother-in-law he was a lawyer still has a Polish citizenship, can I legally become a Polish citizen? Now's not a bad time to do it. They just ousted their conservative government. I so. mean, the only thing, the only, all I know about Warsaw is what I learned from watching Lost Highway, and that didn't paint a great picture of it. But I think I could, I think I could fuck with that. You know, everyone says it's that not about really if, Trump get, white, right? if Trump gets elected in 2016, I'm moving to Canada. And then, like, I don't know, two people moved to Canada. We never heard from them again. Well, it's a lot harder to move to Canada than you think it is, Hemet. Maybe. It's not for a lack of trying. Mm. Some of us have limited financial and legal resources, and we can't just simply conjure fair, a, fair. a passport out of out of the th- clear blue sky, uh, Hemet. Yes, fair enough. I do make up my own passports. <laughs> uh, Mike Johnson... <laughs> There was a, once a portrait of Jesus in a Louisiana courthouse, and when Johnson a was portrait a, lo- of a portrait of Jesus, a portrait of Jesus holding a not book. even like a cross with a carving of him, like a painting. No cross. It's a painting of Jesus, like holding up a Bible, like he's selling. Like the way a Irish moms would have TV. that with a picture of JFK on their wall yeah. in the eighties. Yes, and he defended that painting, saying that the portrait was okay because, quote. The ideas expressed in this painting are not specific to any one faith, and they certainly don't establish a single state religion. Which is weird, because if this was any other religion, he would not be saying any of that stuff. Do you think uh, this dude is eyes open or eyes closed? In terms of... Do you think he believes what he is doing, or do you think he is a power-hungry monster? No, I, I mean, think I it's mean the both first. things can be true. This is you no, think that this is like his heart the first. crusade. Yeah, he's been doing this longer than he would have yeah. have ever needed to in order to acquire power. Okay. He's in this for the long haul because he's a true believer, so. which is why the hard right in the Republican Party like him. Is that better or worse? Do you think worse for us? Yeah, you think? Yeah. You think it's going to make him more effective at what he's doing as opposed to like Mitch McConnell trying to pay, play people chess? Mitch McConnell's or right playing strategy. Yeah. This guy is doing this stuff. He doesn't care about the politics. He's in a safe district. Literally nothing can hurt him. Um, he's kind of Trumpian of just like whatever is in my on my head is the most important thing that right, is he's the happening opposite of to that. anybody. It's, no, I have my principles. My principles are faith-based cruelty. 
And mm. that's what we're... Now, the question is, what's he going to do policy-wise? Because he has a different job than just advocating for himself now. That's a good point, actually. We'll I, see. I, I guess uh, this is sort of a part of politics I haven't really considered before. When you go from being a congressional representative, when your responsibility is to your district mm -hmm. and representing the people... Of, right. I mean, mm -hmm. this is all, all in theory. Representing the the uh, the people from your district to when you become Speaker of the House, that's an, a Where federal you, your responsibility. Your job is to keep your majority, to fundraise, to pass strategic policies that mm -hmm. can get you more victories. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a different job. So the, the that is an open question. And who What's he's he being do? held accountable to is different. Right. And which members of the house is he held accountable to because some interesting. of them matter more than others yeah okay huh. i'm not done yet now oh, we get sorry. to the bigger stuff oh god yeah he also thinks pastors oh, we talked about the johnson amendment mm -hmm. which prohibits pastors from using their pulpit to endorse candidates mm -hmm. any this applies to all nonprofit groups mm -hmm. you cannot use your nonprofit group or your church to tell people how to vote and the johnson amendment specifically prohibits that for years now, conservative Christians have been trying to repeal the Johnson Amendment so that they can use church as basically a political tool. Johnson not only thinks pastors should be allowed to endorse political Obviously. candidates from the pulpit. During a 2017 forum that he attended, he called the IRS rule a form of censorship, saying, we need to unshackle the voice of the church again, which... It's not. They're not silenced. You know who's never silenced in this country? Christians. White men. Yeah. <laughs> and then he sponsored a bill to repeal the Johnson Amendment. So he's hardcore into that. Let's talk about his LGBTQ issues. Wait, before you do that, yeah. um, I'm, I have to apologize. Uh, the Warsaw thing wasn't from Lost Highway. It was from Inland Empire, a different David Lynch movie. Lynch nerds are nerds. Like, they would yell at me. Go They're going to send us the nastiest of the Oh, emails. and it's not in black and white, Mikey says. <laughs> Listen, I took a swing. Last high or <laughs> Inland Fail. Empire is a deep Fail. dig for a movie reference, and I failed twice. It's not my fault. It's all good. I'm in grief, Hemant. I, Laugh I, at my jokes more. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Okay, so LGBTQ issues. Here's where it gets really bad. Mike Johnson not only supported Louisiana's ban on same-sex marriage, and he backed an amendment prohibiting Louisiana from recognizing gay couples who are married in other states. Cute. That's nice. As a Just state... Because that state's rights is uh -huh. only... Oh, fuck him. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. As a state lawmaker, he introduced a bill permitting faith-based anti-gay discrimination. When he was an attorney for the Alliance Defense Fund, now Alliance Defending Freedom, a hate, Christian hate group, he supported a law banning marriage equality. Uh, he claimed that same-sex unions were a slippery slope toward polygamy, pedophilia, and allowing a person to marry his pet, unquote. God, they love going to the pet well. Always huh? the pets. Do these guys want to fuck their dogs? I, they think about it more than like, anyone I, else I ever th does. I, I think we need to pay more mind to this sort of slippery slope rhetoric of, and then people are going to do acts, and it's like, but nobody is or has or wants to or will or is being taken seriously like that. I, I, they're mm -hmm. just tilting it. Uh, he also Selma's argued there windows. was a famous uh, Supreme Court decision overturning sodomy laws, Lawrence v. Texas, saying like, yeah, if two gay men want to have sex, Texas used to say that's just illegal. And then the Supreme Court, like years ago, 20 years ago now, said, no, we're overturning that law. Mike Johnson argued that was the wrong decision. He said that was a blow to, quote, fundamental American values and a millennia of moral teaching. Because he believes gay sex should be criminalized. Cool. Yep. He also opposes life-saving, gender-affirming care for mm. trans kids. Mm -hmm. Of course he does. Um, and again, I can say all this with quotations, with sources, because he's been doing this for a long time. This isn't just for politics. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When it comes to abortion, I mean, none of this is a surprise. He opposes it in every form. He has sought to block access to birth control. He represented a college that didn't want to follow Obama-era guidelines that required employers to provide contraception to employees, saying the mandate forced Americans to, quote, either comply and abandon their convictions or resist and be punished. That college, by the way, uh, which he served as dean for, they never actually opened their doors. They mostly existed. Wait. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? He was appointed dean of this law school. and Before it... Opened or? Which is fine. You can be the dean sure, of the law sure, school sure, before sure. it opens. It takes a little while to get your paperwork in order yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So they already sued the Obama administration over like the contraception care. They weren't even they open as exist. a school and they still don't exist. Yeah. 
He also represented. Wait, 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 I'm so sorry. Do you think they meant it to exist? or I'm do sure you they th- tried. There was a lot of money poured into that college. I don't really know why it didn't open. So it wasn't like a front to make to get standing for a lawsuit like this. I think that's the right thing you are asking, and I don't think it was, but okay. also that's very interesting in hindsight that mm-hmm. that's kind of the only thing they're known for. Mm-hmm. He also represented the state of Louisiana in its attempt to punish doctors who provide abortion care. Good. Um, unless they first jump through, like, onerous regulations. Like, mm-hmm. okay, abortion, uh, Roe is still legal at this point. Doctors can provide abortions as long as they have admittance, like hospital privileges. Mm-hmm. 30 miles from where they're practicing. Like, just bullshit obstacles they put in the way. Uh, Louisiana um, he's also co-sponsored the fifth highest bills. maternal mortality rate in the nation. Yep. None of this helps women. Um, as a member of Congress, he's co-sponsored several bills, too, and this is important, to ban abortion nationwide. Mm-hmm. And now he has the ability to get that back on the agenda, and Republicans would support it. It wouldn't go anywhere, mm-hmm. but this is where it gets weird because you know he wants to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, he knows it won't get passed Mm -hmm. with Biden and the Senate. And yet. And yet. He's going to try. And yet we all just have to sit and watch as one man goes on a campaign to try to destroy as much about this country Mm -hmm. that actually works. He also. uh, This seems relevant today. Uh, In the past, he blamed mass shooting on. On. Oh, gay people. Close. Uh, um, Wait, 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 wait. wait, uh, Condoms. Oh, not bad, but oh, no. Okay, wait, no, 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 don't. Um, I'll so give you not- one more. Shit. Why Did do we, do we have already? mass shootings? Did we do abortion We didn't already? do abortion. Okay. That is not the right answer in oh. this case. He said... Oh, lack of God? No Jesus in school? Closer. Okay. He said, people say, how can a young person go into their schoolhouse and open fire on their classmates? Because we've taught a whole generation, a couple of generations now, of Americans, that there is no right or wrong. That it's about survival of the fittest, and you evolve from the primordial slime. Man, is soon... Evolution was the answer, as everybody. As soon as they got the most fundamental understanding of evolution, they just ran the hell with it, huh? Mm-hmm. Like, they really extrapolate everything that they think we believe by, char- by like, the scientific fact that nature is fucking brutal yes like i don't know what to tell you because we're still not like we're not we're not supposed to be in survival mode anymore my dude like we're supposed to be in taking care of each other mode because we have all of the fucking money in the world go ahead today when he was responding to the mass shooting that took place in maine uh he didn't talk about evolution because again different job now uh, but he did offer one solution. What was more it? More guns. More guns. Closer. More guns. Close. Close. Oh, I don't know. Prayer. prayer in school. Prayer. More just prayer. Oh, Everybody not pray. even in school. Just not even prayer. an actionable thing. Correct. Just y'all, we'll y'all, y'all pray. need to do this. Gang, so here's gang. the thing. Here's the question I have. If you follow church state issues, I looked back through my own archives. I have written about Mike Johnson for many years. Oh. Not about him, but he's appeared in articles about these issues. Mm-hmm. He's not an unknown quantity to people who follow these particular types of issues. The question that I think is worth asking for anyone listening to this or otherwise is how did a guy this extreme um, kind of go undetected by the larger mainstream media and people like that? Like, how come he's not a known quantity despite his very generic name? I mean, it, uh, yeah, I mean, I sounds like he lets other people do the dick swinging around and yeah. just kind of buckles down and gets the job done is He's what I'm understanding. Pretty much. He's served as an attorney for conservative Christian legal groups, a bunch of them. He's worked for all of them. Then he was a state legislator. And if you're a state legislator in like Louisiana, you, no one knows who you are pro- outside of the state and mm-hmm. probably even within. Even as a member of Congress, he was never the most showboaty of guys, mm-hmm. but he always voted a certain way. And now he gets to single-handedly dictate the GOP's agenda shifting the party even more to the right as I didn't know they had more room there, but apparently they could be. One thing that I think is worth pointing out, this is why it is important for, I mean, I'll say us, but we're nobody's. It's important for us and anybody else to call out Christian nationalists Mm -hmm. at any level. Mm -hmm. So if there is a school board member somewhere who is obviously low profile, no one knows who they are, Mm -hmm. but they are trying to push religion at school board meetings. Or preachers who, like, work in circus tents and say crazy things in there. 
or religious extremists who seem fringy mm-hmm. and say awful things right now, this is why I believe it is worth writing about them, talking about them, sharing those clips, not mm-hmm. because I'm trying to help them amplify their message, but because those types of things, being a local leader of like right-wing groups, mm-hmm. those are the stepping stones that make it easier to run for local politics in the future. Yep. And that's your stepping stone to bigger politics down the road. If we don't highlight their insane actions early and often, mm-hmm. it is very easy for them to escape scrutiny. And here's a case in point. One thing you may have seen in the news, there was a mayor, a mayoral election in Franklin, Tennessee, oh that there's no reason anyone outside that place should have paid any attention to it. Mm-hmm. The reason it made national headlines is because one of the candidates was, uh, her name is Gabrielle Hansen. She is basically surrounding herself with open neo-Nazis, white supremacists. Oh, Jesus. Uh, very Trumpy, obviously. Obviously. And like John Oliver did a segment on Last Week Tonight about a particular reporter in Tennessee who has been covering her and like calling out oh, the call, lies okay. and all that stuff. And it was funny because he's saying, God, we need more reporters like right. this guy who just, I think he called him a Nashville's nosiest bitch. <laughs> the reporter <laughs> to which the guy like changes Twitter profile. Oh, to, obviously, I, immediately. Yeah. Oh, um, I miss but, Twitter. But when he, never thought I'd say that. When people started hearing like, oh my God, this isn't just some right wing loon. This is like a dangerous person because people covered it. When that election occurred this week, she lost by a landslide. Really? It was a low turnout election, which mm. is not good in general. Yeah. Um, but she, I think it was like 80% to 20%. She wasn't even close. Wow. And in a local election where only a handful of people are voting, and that means she doesn't get the platform of being mayor. Mm. That makes it a lot harder for her to try to run for something else in the future because mm-hmm. now people know her. Makes it takes her out of a position where she can do harm to other people. Yeah. And I was looking this up. Uh, how did Mike Johnson even enter politics? Mm. He entered in 2015 at the state level because he won a special election to the Louisiana House. Guess who ran against him that year? Who? Nobody. He ran unopposed. In 2015. That's very annoying. Uh Uh-huh. And then he just kept winning those in regular elections, kept his seat Mm. because incumbents usually win. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's possible he would have risen through the ranks even with more scrutiny. But I think there's no doubt that one of the reasons he's now the leader of House Republicans is largely due to the fact that no one paid much attention to him Mm -hmm. until it was too late to make it a problem for even the so-called moderate Republicans who might exist. To be fair, we're playing whack-a-mole here. It's not as if we can keep track of all a billion, like, asshole Republicans who are, like, just low-key doing evil shit all day. Like, we we try, but there's a lot of them. And they're like cockroaches. This week, not even in relation to this story, I have gotten criticism it, through emails, Twitter. It's fine. Like, I'll get the criticism. But they're saying, why are you amplifying this person or that person who says something crazy, some Christian nationalist somewhere? That's what journalism is. I mean, sure, that's what I try to say. But the idea is, like, why are you amplifying this person's horrible, horrible message? Because you should be able to know who this is. And if someone Googles their name, if someone looks them up, I want them to find the crazy shit they say so that this stuff doesn't happen. And so that the second Mike Johnson's name popped up as a candidate for House, it should have been easy, in theory, to make sure every Republican knows full well what they were getting into. I think even a lot of Republicans didn't realize how bad and extreme this guy is. You think? I I think a lot of them are like, all right, fine. I don't have any beef with this guy. I might have a beef with Jim Jordan, Steve Scalise, whatever. Mm. But this guy's always been nice to me. I'm fine voting for him. Yeah. Matt Gaetz has enemies left and right. Sure. This guy doesn't do enemies because he's just like, yeah, I'm voting for the conservative thing. Show up, do evil, go home. It's a banality of evil. All the more reason to call him out. Ugh. Good times. Neat. Let's talk about one other thing. Uh, One of the other (sighs) candidates for speaker before this guy, Mike Johnson, got elected, Mm -hmm. his name was uh, Tom Emmer. He's from Minnesota. He's the current House Majority Whip, whose job it is to count the votes before a big vote. I bet he was pretty stressed last couple weeks. You would think. They don't know how to count on that side. (laughs) Um, But he was floated as a reasonable alternative Mm. to all the other candidates. The funny thing about Emmer is his candidacy, from the moment they all said, like, he's our new guy, we're all going to vote for him. And then four hours later, 
He's like, I'm dropping out. I don't have the votes. <gasps> it was hilarious. Dropped out before they could even vote on the guy. Now, he just couldn't even hypothetically get vote. Oh my God. He looked around the room. He's like, Uh-oh. I'm your new guy. Oh, what? What? No, no, you don't. Okay. All right. I'm out. It's like the person who stands up at the wrong time in the song. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Some of that anger came from allies of Donald Trump because, one, Trump called Emmer a, quote, globalist rhino. Uh, Republican in name only. Yeah, I why realize we he... say that sometimes and don't explain it. And he did that because Emmer voted to certify the 2020 election. What I know, a monster. That's, that's not allowed. He did support <laughs> voter suppression in other ways, but he did vote to certify the election. Some of it, though. <laughs> Some of it, though, <laughs> sorry, right? I was make laughing it? for a second. <laughs> Some of the frustration, though, came from ultra-conservative Republicans who didn't like the fact that in 2022, remember after the Dobbs decision came down, banning, uh, overturning Roe, basically allowing states to ban abortion, one of the concerns is that the same logic used by the Supreme Court could overturn marriage equality and turn that back to the states. Mm. And at the time, because that was now a concern, Uh, There was a bill to protect marriage equality saying, no, no, no. Even if the Supreme Court says this, states Mm -hmm. cannot go back to just banning marriage, gay marriage, same-sex marriage, or if you get married in one state that's legalized it, you can't ignore it in another state. So there was a federal bill to protect marriage equality. Emmer voted in support of that bill. Is he pro-gay marriage? No. In 2007, as a state representative... He actually sponsored a bill proposing a constitutional amendment in Minnesota to only recognize straight marriages. Oh, sure. Sounds like nothing else is going on in Minnesota. Nothing else. No no notes. Uh, In 2010, he got an endorsement from the anti-gay national organization from marriage. But Mm. I think last year he voted in support of that federal bill because, I don't know, maybe he didn't think it was a hill worth dying on. Maybe he's like, eh, this is harmless. Maybe Maybe his mind changed. I doubt it. I am wondering why he voted for that. But in any case... What's his district like? Is he trying to appease moderates? That's an that's a good question, but it didn't matter because yeah, I guess right. someone, uh, Rick Allen, another GOP member, confronted Emmer in their closed conference during those four hours between when he was a candidate and when he dropped out. Uh-huh. He said, the Minnesota Republican doesn't need to get right with me. <gasps> you need to get right with me. Jesus. God. Oh, Jesus. And according to the uh, Daily Beast, according to the source, the room gasped when he said, you need to get right with Jesus. Gasped in approval? I was... I was <laughs> I, that sounds like I a thing a lot of people say all the time. My thoughts, too. And I'm like, why do they gasp? You guys throw Jesus around all the time. Are you surprised someone actually did it behind closed doors? Because yeah. you thought this was just for show? I don't know. Oh, we really believe that? Oh, Yeah, oh. exactly. Marjorie Taylor Greene echoed all those comments, basically saying Emmer fails to reflect the, quote, values and the views of Republican voters in the country, specifically citing his vote on the marriage equality bill. Uh, I mean, it wasn't the only reason he's not speaker, but it was definitely one of them. That's really... Do you think we would have been better off with him? Uh, Compared to the guy now, Mike Johnson, I mean, sure. But Kevin McCarthy is better than the guy right now. So no one's better. So assuming that I have shut out um, politics for a little bit and assuming not everybody here is from the United, and everybody listening here is from the United States, can you give me like a 30 second summary of how we got to this point? Matt Gates used his veto power to say, I don't like Kevin McCarthy. You're out. And then they took That's a, how it happened? Yeah. And then they took a vote and, and they were Gates like... did Gates think he was going to be the successor? Or did it not I matter? No, he didn't care about Why succeeding did we hate him. him? Uh, because he let the government stay open. Through what? Kevin what? McCarthy's like, I don't want the government to shut down. We're just going to, we'll allow the government to oh, stay open budget, for 45 days. The budget shit? Yeah. And he's like, oh. we'll let the government stay open for 45 days and we'll come back to it. And Gates is like, how dare you not cause harm to everybody? So I want to take a vote. I'm allowed to do that because you said only one person can challenge you at any time. And they took a vote and there were like eight. Republicans who were like, no, we Fuck want you. you out. And so he was out. But the problem that I don't think Gates expected, I don't know if he thought he was going to be successful, is that when they introduced like the next guy in line to take over the job, that guy had made enemies. So they didn't yeah. want him. And then the next person like made enemies. They didn't want him. Then Emmer steps in and they're like, you're not even getting to a vote. So Gates threw a pissy fit yep. over the budget. 
over the government staying open. Over the open. government staying open. And now, and then threw his entire party into chaos, chaos for three and weeks. turmoil. And they looked like absolute idiots. I mean, I hope they did. What do you think people are saying to Matt Gates behind behind closed doors? Well, right now? now that Mike Johnson is the speaker, they're like, "This is fine." Matt Gates is like, "I got everything I wanted. I got a hard right Trump guy who denies the election." Yeah, but I have to think the repercussions of the political repercussions internally have to be insane for somebody like Gates of like, you got to put toe the party line, bud. He, uh, he is the party. Matt Gates is the Republican party. He did toe the party line by getting someone who mm-hmm. represents the Trump wing of the party in charge of the party. But, but uh, you know, this wasn't a foregone conclusion that this guy ended up as speaker. Right. So like, he just wanted, he it just wanted an, Kevin again, McCarthy out. And un- oh, wow. And well, he got what he wanted. I guess I, I guess I don't understand what the fuck these people want. Well, that's the weird thing. They don't have any policies they're trying to yeah, pass Yeah, that's here. what I'm saying. Is like, just cause what is your goal? Their goal is to make the government the gov- as small as possible, the government spread down. Christianity. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't agree with them, you can die, and that's fine with them. Oh, yeah. Yep. Which is... Just like Jesus. All this is weird in part because when it comes to gay marriage, uh, marriage equality and stuff, that the Republicans basically sank Tom Emmer's campaign about... Because he didn't get right with Jesus. Mm. 55% of Republicans support marriage equality. That's according to like a 2021 Gallup poll. So you're even that. Tom Emmer's closer to where the voters are. They just don't care because those voters don't count. Well, and they're chasing the lowest common denominator, right? Um, like they're, yeah. they're seeing how low they can yeah, go. There's a former Republican House member, Denver Riggleman, I believe from Colorado. But he chimed in to all this after Emmer uh, was sank. And he said... I know what that's like. God forbid you value freedom of individual choice and marriage equality. I was called the Antichrist for officiating a same-sex wedding. Wow. Yeah. By the way, Tom Emmer, yeah. practicing Catholic, Catholic Church, very publicly opposed to marriage equality and LGBTQ rights, and I don't think Emmer disagreed with any of those positions. Yeah, but Joe Biden is also Catholic, so all and Catholics are liberals care. now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Congratulations, all of the men who went to my dad's golf course. <laughs> You're all Democrats. Yeah, right. Um, I figured <sighs> this is a good time to give you a little bit of good news. Mm. So, uh, yeah, you should put on a headphone. You'll want to listen to this. Okay. There was one. There was one kind of nice thing to hear. I see the name Frost, and I hope I'm going to get to listen to a little poetry. Uh, yes, I, I have poetry from Robert Frost just for you. That is how this podcast Two roads works. diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could. I know this whole poem, so you better waiting. cut me off. Nope, I'm gonna let you. Oh, you think I don't fucking know this poem by heart? Oh, I'm gonna let you give you enough rope to take Two care of yourself. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both. But be one traveler, long I stood and stared down one as far as as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just and fair, and having perhaps the better lay because it was grassy and wanted wear. But as for that, the passing there was really about the same. I'm good now. Two roads diverged in a... I think I missed a verse, but two roads diverged in a, a wooden eye. I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Which, if you listen to the poem, he didn't pick the one less traveled by. Go ahead. Interesting. Fuck you, Hemet. My fucking literature major finally is useful. Nicely done. Oh, God. Was that worth college? Um, I learned that in high school because we sang oh. a bunch of Robert Frost poetry. That sounds two horrible. Two roads oh, dear diverged God. Okay. in a yellow. So... It was bad. I'm going to change the timestamp to start now. <laughs> So, um, there was a hearing in the midst of all this chaos for the house. There was a hearing on global religious persecution, which fine, that does exist. Mm. It was in front of the subcommittee on national security, the border and foreign affairs. I was still thinking about Robert Frost. Who are we talking about? Yeah, we're not there yet. So, oh, okay. like, so during these hearings, you have people from both parties, like asking questions to the witnesses and yep. trying to. Basically, just make a case for, like, this is a problem that exists. Maybe these experts can help fill in uh, what we ought to do about it. And really, it's a chance for all the uh, members of Congress to deliver monologues. Yeah, to about grandstand. And, yes. Yeah. So, Robert Garcia, who's... Practice just their stump speech. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of Democrats who were great. They One guy, Robert Garcia, used his time to highlight how domestic anti-gay bigotry often gets transported to other countries. Which is very true. Yep. Jamie Raskin, uh, he noted the problem with blasphemy laws. Another uh, Democrat, Jared Moskowitz, called out the Republican silence when their leaders cozy up to neo-Nazis, Holocaust deniers, and white supremacists. Wow. But the, the one I want to play for you 
is Maxwell Frost, who is the youngest member of Congress. I think he's 12 years old. He's from Florida. He's awesome. Oh, is he like a young black kid? Yeah, yeah he's fantastic. Yeah, I've seen uh, uh, him floating around. He seems yeah, great. Yeah, he's great. What's and his name? Maxwell Frost? Maxwell That's Frost. A- Max Frost? Yeah. What a fucking dope it's name. A Pixar hero name. Sure fucking is. Yeah, so when he Max spoke, Frost. he pointed out that faith-based persecution often means white evangelicals using their faith to justify oppression against outside groups. Hmm. I'm not going to play like all five minutes of his speech, but I want to play one part of this for you because he talked about Christian nationalism. Mm. Worth a listen. Here you go. And this threat to democracy has made its way to Congress. I mean, my colleague, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, has said, quote, Christian nationalism is actually a good thing. It is an identity that Republicans need to embrace. Mm. And I am being attacked by the godless left because I said I am a proud Christian nationalist, end quote. My colleague, Representative Lowen Boebert, said, quote, the church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk, end quote. Junk being the Constitution and Bill of Rights. The Bible itself in 2 Corinthians actually warns us against this. Paul warned against this. He warned us against people who would preach of a Christ that differs from the true Christ that we learn about in the Bible. That's exactly what Hmm. Christian nationalism is doing. I condemn religious extremism everywhere, globally and domestically. We have to recognize the threat it poses to our most sacred freedoms and root it out everywhere. And I think it's incumbent, especially upon us uh, as Christians, and me as a Christian, to be at the forefront of the fight to ensure that white nationalism and Christian nationalism doesn't see the light of day. Thank you, and I yield back. Yeah. That was that is that was outstanding. Good. He also said elsewhere in his uh, in his minutes that he got to talk uh, as a man of faith. I know that Christianity is not Christian nationalism. I oppose my faith being used to whitewash a racist, violent, and dangerous ideology. Good for him. Yeah, I mean, and that's the way to do it, right? Like, you, if you you have to call out your own people, absolutely, which is why I yell at men a lot because, like, they need to get their men in line. Like, women aren't going to do it anymore. Yes. Um, do you remember last summer there was a Michigan State Senator <laughs> Mallory McMorrow, and she went viral after she gave a speech. One of her Republican colleagues in the Michigan legislature basically called her a groomer because she supported LGBTQ kids. And she delivered a speech. It was amazing. It's Mm. fantastic. Worth a watch. But basically, she said, the straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom is here to protect kids from being marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, or Christian. Wow. And it was great. And that's the thing. Like, when Christians themselves have the courage to call out Christian nationalism, Mm. that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, by the way, Also, big kudos to Amanda Tyler of the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty. She was one of the four witnesses who was there for that hearing. And during Max Frost's comments, he directed a bunch of questions toward her, like, what do you think about this? What do you Mm -hmm. say about this? And she said very bluntly, Christian nationalism often overlaps with and provides cover for white supremacy and racial subjugation. Wow. She said that Christian nationalism is used by white supremacists to try to justify their violence. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned this while we were listening to the clip. I did appreciate and notice the subtle shade from Frost Frost when he cited 2 Corinthians. So good. Because Trump didn't know how to do that. So good. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, we need need as many Christians as possible to distance themselves from and denounce other Jesus followers who use religion as a weapon against people they don't disagree with, uh, they don't agree with or understand. Mm-hmm. That's why I yell at all the white people. I'm, that the, is I'm the queen of the white people. Your people, mm-hmm. not my people. Yeah. Uh, um, a little nervous about claiming that, but okay. God, I'm going to get firebombed, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, that's how this works. Um, this, I thought this was a bigger story, but then all this other shit happened in the house, and then I, it turned out no one cared about this one at all. But I still <laughs> want to bring it up. During a rally in New Hampshire this week, Donald Trump was speaking at this rally in New Hampshire, and he said if he was reelected, he would block immigrants who, quote, don't like our religion from coming into the U.S. (laughs) Yeah, I'll read you what he said. (laughs) I will implement strong ideological screening of all immigrants. This is Trump? This is Trump. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you don't like our religion, which a lot of them don't, if you sympathize with jihadists, 
then we don't want you in our country and you're not getting in. We don't want you. Get out of here. You're fired. He did not say you're fired. Unquote. Listen, he has very little else. Um, quick sidebar. This past episode of This Day in Esoteric Political History, they talked about uh, the first time Trump flirted with running for president. Yeah. Um, and this is 1988, and he, he said at that time, nobody has ever accomplished as much as I have at my age. And he was 41. Yes, no one. <laughs> no one has ever inherited hundreds of millions of dollars from their parents before the age of 41. Like, you can say that shit when you're like 22, but once you turn 30, you just get... <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure every CEO... Nobody's- and then, oh my God, fucking uh, Jody Avergan, the the host, just starts reading like Newton was only twenty three when he discovered gravity. I thought the whole point of Hamilton is like they're all twelve years old when they find the when they found the country I, when they found right, right. the country. Like all those guys were in their teens, oh my God, or they early twenties, or whatever. a bunch of them were. But now people are like, um, you're nineteen, you don't know what gender you are. Yeah, yeah. I hate. Um, everything. So this raises the question, and what? I know I'm sidestepping a lot of Trump stuff that he said there. In a country of 330 million people, founded on the principle of religious freedom... Is he going to try to deport us personally? Which, oh, yeah. Which religion is our religion? Lowercase c, Christian. Like, I, but it's not. It's not. And I know it's no, not. of because course I know it's not, know. Hammond. But, like, white evangelicals in the MAGA crowd do not believe progressive Christians, less fundamentalist Christians, pro-choice Christians... Uh, LGBTQ accepting Christians, mm. Christians who challenge them. None of them are true Christians. Mm. So it's really, it's whatever form of Christianity is practiced by MAGA extremists who make up Trump's base. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's definitely mm-hmm. not Islam. It's definitely not other religions because Trump doesn't know any other religion. Correct. Um, and so that's the thing. Like, it's easy to, this is why I thought it was a big deal. Like, Trump just made this really weird remark that says a lot about where the Republican Party is at. And I it's, mean, and it was, ignored because there were rather bigger stories and partly because he says crazy shit all the time. What but like, is going on with the Republicans? He's saying certain immigrants shouldn't be allowed to become legal citizens based solely on their religious label. That is what he was getting at. Yeah, I know. Why and are you so shocked, I'm not shocked. This is the same shit I'm, that's been I'm happening. I'm not shocked by him saying it. I'm shocked by how little attention was paid to it. And this is, again, going back to the Mike Johnson problem. He just said something insane that is unconstitutional. Um, and the fact that so little attention got right. paid to it because it was low on the totem pole this week. Right. It's like, that's why that stuff tends to get a pass. Because one, if you say crazy shit all the time, no one's going to care. I would push back against that because it, it, I, I think maybe the reason it didn't get much traction is like, it's nothing new. Like Trump from has Trump, been- right. From Trump, He has been no, saying- No, but that's why he gets away with it. Uh, he- but he doesn't get away with it because he did lose an election. He, yes. So he did. But he's still winning the Republican Party right now. That's not I mean, what I'm talking about, though. You said he gets away with it. He did not get away with mm. it. He failed. He failed his thing. This is the kind of rhetoric. But even he's if been he used. lost that, the rest of the party is with him. I'm no not, Republican. Hammond, I'm not disagreeing with that. No, I am you are just trying to point out that this is nothing new. And so if your question is, I don't know why people aren't covering this more. Yeah. We know everything about Trump. We need to know he's done. He's out of ways to surprise us. Knock on then wood. The coverage, Besides dying. Then the coverage should be why. Why aren't Republicans who claim to value the Constitution, then why aren't they held accountable for what their because leader they don't, says? Because nobody's holding that. Because no, nobody's that's holding my them point. accountable. Nobody's holding them accountable, and they should. Because if the leader of the Republican Party is saying basically brown immigrants are not allowed to get in, that should be a big deal for the entire party, not just Trump yeah, saying crazy shit. But Hammond, and it's the not. Republican Party is a white nationalist party. Like I, I, no, I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying to the reporters who didn't give this much coverage, that's their problem. They should. This should be a bigger story. I mean, because I, this is what the Republican Party now believes. I don't even believe that's the first time he said something like that. Something oh, of, of you not. can't come in unless you're the. So he's just plain like. Listen, every time he, somebody releases a greatest hits album, they don't all go to the top of the chart again because we know it. Right. We know that song. We've heard it before, and you can't surprise us anymore. Again, unless you died soon. If only. The Pew Research Center, by the way, we've talked about this. Last year, the Pew Research Center came out with a survey where they asked people uh, questions like, do you think the U.S. should be a Christian nation? 
but they did not define it for the people. Mm. They just said, do you think it should be? 45% of all Americans said yes. 60% said they believed we were founded as one. Mm. And among Republicans, uh, I have the number oh. here somewhere. Oh, was, I bet they're much yeah. more accurate because they really care about history. <laughs> it was much higher. But like, here's the thing. Republicans have been silent, if not accepting of all this. Maybe that's because 99% of them, 99% of Republicans in Congress are Christian. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because they have no backbone for condemning Trump. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's both. Um, But again, uh, as Max Frost pointed out, Marjorie Taylor Greene says we should be Christian nationalists. Mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis has urged Republicans to wear the full armor of God as they try to defeat Democrats. And it always gets a pass in the GOP and it always gets a pass in the media who doesn't treat it like a five alarm fire as they should. Like, again, I know this, I'm speaking to the choir here. America doesn't have a religion. It welcomes all people who, as, it welcomes people of all faiths just as it welcomes people who reject all faiths. Doesn't mean every religion deserves respect, but that religious differences are not gonna prevent someone from becoming or living as an American. Mm. Um, that should be universally appreciated by people of all parties. That's what they say often, that we're a country of religious freedom. And again, when Trump says something counter to that, it's telling that doesn't get covered and that his own party doesn't seem to have a problem with it. That's it. I'm <sighs> I don't. Worth point, that if they're not going to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. All right. I, I just want to go on record and say that I disagree with almost everything you just said. Excellent. <laughs> Let's talk about Mark Burns. Do you remember Mark Burns? Mr. Burns? Yes. He is, Mark Burns is this guy who kind of made news. uh, He's been in the news for a long while. But the thing that was hilarious is when he was running in 2022. Nope. I'm trying to think of other Burnses. Nope. He's uh, just a guy who's perpetually running for some office or another. Nope. So uh, he was, he's a preacher. Mm -hmm. He's a very mega culty preacher, Mm -hmm. culture war obsessed guy. He ran for Congress in 2022. Mm -hmm. Uh, He failed miserably. I think I got to look that up. Was it North Carolina? I'm not sure. I'll look it up for sure. You look it up. Okay. So Jesus, um, while we're doing that though, he appeared at a reawaken America event last weekend, Mm -hmm. which is one of those Trumpy Christian events. Mm -hmm. And after praising Lord and savior, Donald Trump, he said, we don't care about those indictments. We don't care about those arrests. He made an announcement that was kind of scary. He said, the Burns Christian Military Academy is going to open next year in order to save our children from the evil public school system. Jesus Christ. He's opening his own military academy. Can you have a personal military academy? That feels like it has to be ordained by somebody, you would doesn't think. it? He also said it's going to use the Abeka curriculum, which is a famous homeschooling East Christian. East South Carolina. South Carolina. There we go. He's using the Ooh, Abeka curriculum. I just curriculum. read ahead. Ooh. I know what's happening next. Okay. He's using a homeschooling Christian curriculum that is known for its misinformation mm-hmm. uh, and not exposing kids to the existence of LGBTQ people and ignoring the role of black people throughout our history. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what he plans to teach them. It's not a military academy. It's just a form of Christian nationalist I just read the article. Holy shit. Which article? I cannot, there just, was an article? Um, and about what? The Christian Post about this guy's military academy. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to read to tell you oh, about it. Please, please tell me what is in front of me. First of all, did you know Mark Burns lied about his military service? Let me tell you about his military service. <laughs> Okay, I'll put my phone uh-huh. down. You just tell me. I'll just uh-huh. listen. I'll just be a good audience so member. So this guy famously yep. said he spent six years in the Army Reserve. And then a few years ago, CNN did an interview with him because he was like a Trump spokesperson. Mm. And they're like, oh, you said you, you were in the Army? He's like, oh, yeah, I was totally in the Army. And they're like, "And he just we asked the Army. And they're like, who is no. this guy? He was in the Army Reserve. Or I'm sorry, he was not in the Army Reserves or whatever. Uh, So he lied about that. Uh, He lied about going to college, where he went to college. He said he graduated from this place. He didn't. Was it a good place, at least, that he lied about? Or was it just just like Liberty University and he couldn't even hack that? I mean, he just, he lied about practically everything in his bio. And when he was finally called out about it, 
Um, his church's website said he had a Bachelor of Science degree. He served six years in the Army Reserve. Mm -hmm. He wasn't in the Army Reserve. He was in the South Carolina National Guard, Did and he was a... discharged in 2008. Do you have a bachelor's at all? He said he went to North Greenville University, and that's where he got his bachelor's degree. But mm -hmm. the school said to CNN, this is in 2016, when he was one of, like, a black Republican defending Trump. Oh, um, yeah, he he's said, black. I didn't he realize said, that. Uh, he said, I graduated with a bachelor's degree. The school said he went for one semester uh, and then... Why is it the fact that he claimed he has a bachelor of science the funny part to it's me? It's very specific. Then when CNN said, so you're lying about all this stuff, like we took this from your biography on your church's website. Uh -huh. And he said the page was obviously manipulated or hacked or someone added that stuff in. And then CNN's like, Hey, Wix, the company that ran the website or had the template for the website. Oh, my God. They're Who like, updated this? Uh, they're like, yeah. Did this stuff happen? They're like, there's no evidence of a hack. And then you got to look this up on the CNN. Lies on lies. Go on YouTube. Look up Mark Burns CNN interview. Is it funny? It's so funny because right. they spend a couple minutes saying, this is this guy that Trump is trotting out everywhere to promote him. So we had some questions for this guy. Oh, and he's wow. so excited to be in front of the camera. And he's so excited, like, yeah, what questions do you have for me? I'm the important guy here. They're like, so you were in the Army? He's like, yeah, six years in the Army Reserves. That's interesting because we, we spoke to the Army, and they don't know who you are. But he did serve in the National Guard. Which is fine. Then say you served in the South State. South Carolina National Say Guard. you served in the State National like, Guard. That's very different. it's such a strange different. lie. Yeah. Um, and and such a it's such an easily provable lie. Like there's true, so many people who have lied about military service. I know, but isn't it like the easiest thing in the universe to figure out somebody hasn't actually been in the military? Like you are counting on the reporters to actually fact check mm. any of this, which they don't do usually. And then the reporter uh, said brought up all this stuff. Mark Burns is like that's not fair at all. I thought we were doing a profile, and all of a sudden you're here trying to destroy my character. Got your journalism. Yeah, I then, sat down and you asked me some questions and you got me. This is from the CNN article. At one point, Burns told the reporter he believed the interview was off the record, to which the reporter said, I didn't Excuse agree to that. Me? And then Burns walks away in the middle of the interview. But <sighs> dignity intact. Despite, dignity intact. Despite all of that, not only is this guy still going at it, he ran for Congress in 2022, despite all. It's like George Santos coming back in a few years to run for Senate or Truly. something like that. He still did it. He lost in the primary, but it didn't matter. And now he's going to open a military academy. Okay. I just need to... Have you gotten... Are you going to talk about uniforms? Oh, their uniforms look wild. Okay, but here's the thing. I think he wants the... Okay, we plan to have our students wear a military-inspired uniform akin to those worn by cadets at West Point and VMI, the v Virginia Military Institute. We also encourage parents, grandparents, and mentors to participate by wearing the uniform, fostering a sense of community and support. He wants parents and grandparents to wear a school uniform. Everyone has to wear the uniform. Like, where do you think he meet? like, when they visit the... Here's School? what I'm worried. Here's what I'm worried is going to happen. Or just like around their house. He's going to spend the next year raising money for this because he's got the logo and shit. And then there's there's no reason to believe it's actually going to open. That's where I <sighs> think this is going. I yeah. don't know. He can prove me wrong. He can, and then he'll blame liberals for it launch not launching. We'll so see. So it's a money laundering scheme. I'm not saying that. I'm I just am. saying if it happens, Fucking I'm not going to be surprised. Sue me. You're laundering money. <laughs> You can't get people to sue us when this is a co-hosted show. I, me, me. This is Jessica. Jessica, not Hammett. Just sue <laughs> Jessica. There you go. Hammett is too dumb to know what's going on. There you go. <laughs> All right, I have one other good news story for you. Uh, kind of good news. Oklahoma's Attorney General, Gentner Drummond, which is very oklahoma -y. the Attorney General of Oklahoma, insert stereotypes here, just filed a lawsuit to stop the state from using taxpayer money to, to prop up the nation's first ever religious charter school. <laughs> it needs propping up, you say. Yeah, again. I thought God provides. The, the religious right, the Ryan Walters, the Christian nationalist, like superintendent of public education mm -hmm. said, yeah, we should absolutely open up a Catholic charter school paid for by taxpayer funds. And the board that approves that sort of thing they voted three to two yeah. to make it happen. Mm. 
church state separation groups a couple months ago, they filed a lawsuit to put a stop to that. We'll see how that goes. But what's amazing is that this week, it's not just them anymore. The attorney general of Oklahoma is like, yeah, all those church state separation groups are right. (gasps) I'm filing a lawsuit to put a stop to it as well. Wow. Like I said, surprising. Oklahoma's attorney general is saying, yeah, we... Have we talked about that guy recently? We brought him up when we talked about the school itself. Just to give you a little bit of background here. Um, This lawsuit from the Oklahoma attorney general, it was filed directly with the state Supreme Court. It says the state constitution prohibits sectarian control of public schools. It also says that using taxpayer dollars to fund a Catholic education violates the Establishment Clause in Mm -hmm. the U.S. Constitution. He wrote... Make no mistake, if the Catholic Church were permitted to have a public virtual charter school, a reckoning will follow in which this state will be faced with the unprecedented quandary of processing requests to directly fund all petitioning sectarian groups, which is a fancy way of saying, if we say yes to the Catholic group, the Satanists are going to come in, Muslims are going to come in, and we're going to have to say yes to them. Yep. Like, not exactly which the best is, phrasing, like, oh, no, God, but we can't have that. The point, like, I feel like you and I try to make all the time of, like, you guys think that you're, like, sneaking your way around these rules, but what you're doing is opening a Pandora's box. Yes, he actually said this, which I thought, not the way I would have phrased it, but okay. Today, Oklahomans are being compelled to fund Catholicism because of the legal precedent created by the board's actions by approving the school. Tomorrow, we may be forced to fund radical Muslim teachings like okay. Sharia law. Okay. It's like, all right, well, calm, calm all right, down, buddy. Well, all right, the brakes a little. We, yeah. we had already gotten your this, point. He's not the hero of this story. You don't have to throw somebody under the bus, bud. Yeah. He's not a hero, <laughs> no, but no, 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 no. he is right to file this lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, oh Ryan, Ryan Walters, echo. Uh, he responded to the lawsuit by saying, and this doesn't make any sense, but this is what he said, Atheism should not be the state-sponsored religion. I know. This is what we've been saying. uh Uh-huh. Again, some background here. Back in June, the Oklahoma Statewide Virtual Charter School Board, they voted unanimously in June to say no to the Catholic school. It's called St. Isidore of Seville Virtual Catholic Charter School. They all voted no. And then the same board, like months later, voted three to two to move forward with the application. That's after Kevin Stitt, the governor, installed a new member of the board to take over one of the other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why it was approved. Well, that sounds and above again, board. why would a taxpayer-funded Catholic school uh, be a problem? Well, unlike, <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> unlike public schools, the Catholic school does not require teachers to be certified. They do not have to accept openly LGBTQ teachers. They would explicitly promote Catholic doctrine during school hours. Uh, There's the possibility that a student who gets pregnant could be expelled, that a trans student who exists could be expelled, (laughs) that sex education is omitted from the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And this type of school may not have the resources to take on like special needs students. Mm -hmm. And that is something the school actually said, that is something we still we will need to develop, which, yeah, get on that maybe and stop. Well, I mean, you know. Special education, who gives a fuck about those people, right? Yeah. Those are because Jesus was like, take care of the least among us, the worst, right? Something like that. If and I he... wanted them to not have impairments, I would have done it myself. So just let them wallow. Something like that. I think that's the what amazing Jesus thing. Said. The a couple last year when this was still on the table, people mm-hmm. knew this Catholic school was trying to do this. Mm-hmm. The attorney general before 2022. His name is John O'Connor. He actually wrote a non-binding, like, white paper, basically saying, listen, if we approve the charter school, everything will be fine. He gave them the green light to move forward with it. Everything will be fine. Totally fine. End of sentence. And what was amazing... Future me will worry about it. I hate that guy. um, This guy, Attorney General Drummond, the new guy, he beat that guy in the Republican primary in 2022. He ended up winning the race because it's Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And then in February of this year, he formally withdrew his predecessor's opinion. Wait. Yeah. The old you attorney. You do that? Yeah. The old attorney general said, this is I fine. It's legal. Can. Now the new attorney general said, hey, I saw what the old guy wrote. And Wait, actually, I'm I saying, care about the 
law, yeah. so I'm just going to go ahead and give this a little He look-see. said, the opinion, as issued by my predecessor, misuses the concept of religious liberty by employing it as a means to justify state-funded religion. Uh, I doubt most Oklahomans would want their tax dollars to fund a religious school whose tenets are diametrically opposed to their own faith. Hmm. And so he was right about it then, too. But again, Ryan Walters, wow. the superintendent of public education, was like, eh, who cares what the attorney general says? Yeah. I'm a guy with no authority, and I say it's fine. Sure. And because he's one of these always in the public eye Christian nationalist types. Hmm. And he has the confidence of a mediocre white man. Yes, he does. And they voted in favor of approving it. And now they're now facing two separate lawsuits. I don't know if it'll work. But, man, I'm, I'm glad they're suing. I hope it works. This school is scheduled to open next fall, 2024. It is expected over the first five years to cost taxpayers in Oklahoma more than $26 million. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so. I believe I looked this up last time we talked. I think Oklahoma is like 47th on the education rankings in the U.S. Give or take a couple there, yeah. So, well, yeah. I mean, they would have a hard time figuring it out, yeah. so I don't blame them. Uh, so, that is, you know what, here's good the times. thing, it's too fucking bad, because that means a bunch of money that should be going to, I don't know, pay Public teachers schools. and yeah. fund schools and make sure that, you know, there's no lead in the fucking walls. Thank God they're spending that all on a Catholic school, just uh-huh. like Jesus wanted. Are we done yet? Almost. Go. One more story for you. This one's quick. One of the other hearings that took place this week uh, took place in the Committee on Education and the Workforce, uh, and there was a subcommittee there. And again, back to what is a committee? It's all the members of Congress get to grandstand if they're on the committee. And one of the people who spoke is Burgess Owens, who is a 72-year-old black Republican from Utah. A rare breed. Hold on. I just need to break that. First of all, his name is Burgess Owens, which we just fucking ran through. I'm telling you, there are so many members. If we've learned nothing else today, it's that there are like 300 members of Congress no one's ever heard of. Who's Burgess Meredith? Is that the guy from Rocky? Sure. I think it's the coach from Rocky. Okay, so his name is Burgess what? Owens. Owens. Okay, I'm into that. And he is a black Republican from Utah? That is correct. I was not aware that they had black people in Utah. No one had that on the bingo card, but there you go. Oh my God. Next you're going to tell me there's a black representative from Maine. (laughs) Yeah, right? Um, And one of the things he pointed, they were talking about censoring books and like whether books are actually censored and all that. And I want to read you what he said. Some say we are here today to talk about so-called book banning in K-12 school libraries. I bet that's not what Burgess wants to talk about. Mm. When one of our nation's most consequential books holds up the Bible. The Bible. Banning was done by the Supreme Court in 1963 when officially mandated Bible reading, this book, was banned from all of us. Matter, yeah, I'm going to finish his thought here. Yeah, matter yeah, of fact, ahead. there's, there's he, he doesn't speak in great English, but matter of fact, there are some that are listening today probably think this, him holding up the book, mm. is totally unconstitutional, that I can even hold it up. Due to the banning of this book, generations of Americans today have no knowledge of the tenets upon which this country has been founded. Do they, you have to take a test before you get into Congress? Nope. They ban the knowledge of basic truths of happiness like the Judeo-Christian concepts of the Golden Mm. Rule, which says we should treat others the way we want to be treated, or ban the knowledge of the Ten Commandments. The Golden Rule was hanging up in my second grade classroom. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. From the Bible, Mm -hmm. apparently. I mean, no, I'm not kidding. It genuine. There was a sign that said that. Yeah. I don't know what he's fucking talking about. It's not a Jesus original, I promise you. Or (laughs) he also said they ban the knowledge of the Ten Commandments. Among these, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Knowledge? Knowledge of the Ten Commandments. They banned knowledge of the Ten Commandments. By banning the Bible, that which didn't happen. That doesn't mean anything. No one knows the Ten Commandments. Among these, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt honor thy father and mother. And I'll stop there. Yes, you're raising your hand in a podcast. I have a, a question. Um, why, if he thinks that all of these people are Christians and want to read the Bible at school and study the Bible at school shouldn't they be doing that at like aren't they learning all their christian lessons from their good christian families like wh- why does he they need reinforcement in the schools i just don't with understand with the bibles that like, they could read in school if they want to no one's stopping them it's not actually banned have you ever uh, encountered somebody who was just sitting reading the bible 
I mean, no, people, if they're reading anything for fun, it's a good book, not no. the good book. Oh, because I obviously asked you that question so I can tell I my own story about somebody reading the Bible you for fun saw when I was in high school. It? I was in high school. I was at Snowball, the, <laughs> the, drug, <laughs> awareness. the drug awareness thing. Oh, boy. Um, and this gal was on her top bunk and reading. I was like, what's she reading? She's like, the Bible. And I was like, all right. And just moonwalked out of there. That's how you do it. <laughs> didn't, yep. Didn't, you stay the hell away from that person. And it truly person. was just a moment of like, didn't realize people did that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did okay. it have pictures in the Bible? She didn't show me. Mm. She wasn't. I, I was it like I a want teen to be very Bible? Clear. I want to be very clear. She was Some of those not have being showy offy. I think yeah, she was just. Yeah, you asked a question. She answered fucking it. Ra- she didn't show it off. She didn't try to talk to me. I think, And I think it was like an old school Bible. I, nice. I don't know. Whatever. Like, she knew what she was doing, I guess. Nice. She knew what she was about. You know, when you're 16 and you read the Bible for fun. Oh, yeah. Needless to say. <laughs> and uh, a drug free, alcohol free camp. <laughs> man. Someone like that needs drugs. <gasps> chug, um, chug, 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 chug. Yeah, line. needless to say, the 1963 Supreme Court decision that Owens was referencing did not ban the Bible. It ended mandatory oh, school-sponsored okay. Bible readings. Mm-hmm. School-sponsored, that's it. And didn't he say, he said mandatory, didn't he? Well, that? no, he said it stopped the mandatory Bible readings, that's, which is true. Which is but true. But it didn't and also, ban the Bible. Kids can still do it. But that's what Teachers, I'm saying. He said the words... They it's banned like, mandatory reading. Yeah, it's like he understands he what they did, and yet he chooses... Eyes open, eyes closed. With this guy, I don't know enough about this guy, but I would imagine he's he's in this. He's in this for the long haul. You think his eyes open? Yeah. Uh, like, things like that. Those, like, really genuinely, I like... In, understand that these people really do arguments. believe the lies that have been fed to them from yeah. the David Barton types of people. Yeah, that's true. And I, when I was, um, name drop, when I was interviewing Nikki Hammer, um, Nicole Hammer from uh, This Day Pod, I was having a similar, like, meltdown. She was like, you can't, you cannot try to find the logic line. You cannot, like, oh, yeah. follow the thread because they, people are able to hold these, like, incredibly dissonant thoughts in their head that don't ever see each other. Two ships in a night, these thoughts. Because there were only like four of them in their dumb head. To their credit, um, American Atheists responded on Twitter, Hi, Representative Owens. You may know us from such Supreme Court cases as the one you're mischaracterizing. <laughs> the Bible has never been banned from public schools. Do you really want teachers leading mandatory Bible readings in class? Which version of the Bible are you mandating? Which class, Dern? Uh, Does Representative Owens want a big government mandate about which version of the Bible government employees should be reading to indoctrinate children? Should Mormon kids be forced to hear teachers endorsing the NIV Bible? Or what? We look forward to your clarification. What's NIV? Uh, New International Version. It's it's the heathen's Bible. The fundamentalists don't like it at all. Oh, interesting. See, this is this is what I said a couple of weeks ago, that I think the way to fix this whole, like, re- white nationalist thing is be like, yeah, you're right. We do need to have an official um, official religion. Now, why don't I grab about 200 of y'all and yeah. throw you in a room, and you guys just come out <laughs> when you figure out which religion it is. And right. please, oh, my God, please be specific, because everything is riding on if this. If only. It would but, be like, great. true or false? Like, it's such a... It's such a thing that if you follow it to its logical conclusion, just falls apart in your hands. They never get that far in they the really voices don't. in their head when they, they're talking about this. It stuff. truly like you the, know what I hate those Christian apologetics books. I hate it when atheists do it too. But there are books where they're like, "Let us discuss what a conversation about these religious differences would look like in practice." Here's yeah. little Bobby saying, "Yes, the Bible was banned in school," and then the atheist stock character. Says something that no atheist Fuck would you, ever Bobby. actually. Yeah, they say something no atheist would ever actually say, and already half of sentence in, you're like, I don't believe any of this, and then it goes on for pages because, accordingly, the debate that goes on in your head yeah. works yeah. exactly the way you planned. Do you? I hate those books. I've seen so many. Do you of know them. what that reminds me of? Is um, the the podcast? How did this get made? They do bad movies, okay, and at the end they always read five star reviews about the movies. <laughs> And I would say 80% of the time, whoever's writing the review is having an argument with an invisible person. Like, yes. I'm so si- tired of people saying that this, that, and the other. No, this isn't this thing, but it's a good mood. Like, they're mm-hmm. clearly having an argument that they've been having in their head with somebody for like five days. And they're like, oh, these people are won't leave me alone. Yeah. Like, it's just this, this anger of... About having Indirect an opinion, anger. just going everywhere. I've just having I have an opinion, and that makes me angry for a reason. Yep. 
I've created a hundred straw men. Yeah, None exactly. of them exist. I hate them so much. Yeah. Why did I create them with my own dumb brain? I think that's good for now. Okay. You've been through a lot this yeah, week. Yeah, I really have. <laughs> Ugh, fuck me. This is a terrible month. My birthday month. Happy birthday. No, it wasn't. It's I've been to two fucking funerals this month. It's I found a I found a dead goat gang. Like what? shit has been bad. But it's bad out there. Do yes. something nice for how about this? Do something nice for somebody. Just like it's Halloween. Give out king size candy. Yes. Bars. I this has fucked my spooky season. You know I love spooky season, and I have not... All I have been doing... We'll talk about this in the bonus all episode. Right. Spooky season? Yeah. Well, all right. whatever. <laughs> all right. You can find us... Uh, go to patreon.com slash friendly atheist podcast. You can find me on my couch. You can find Jessica on her couch. With my weighted depression blanket. There you go. All right. We're going to do like a five-minute bonus, we'll do a bonus fi- episode. I'll, and if you listen to the bonus episode, I'll tell you the most embarrassing thing that happened to me over the weekend, which is truly embarrassing. I, everyone I've told about this has laughed at my face. Oh. And I deserve it. This is really good All right. news. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.